Hello and welcome to another video on inclusive education. In this video, we will look at a few strategies for developing an inclusive culture in schools with me, Dr. Sunanda Roy. Time codes of these strategies are given in the big description box and at the bottom of the screen. You can hover around and choose the strategy of your preference. So let's begin. An inclusive culture involves the full and successful inclusion of diverse people into an institution. Schools with an inclusive culture follow zero tolerance to discrimination. This means that discrimination between students is not acceptable in any activity that is carried out by the school. These activities may deal with interactions between students, teachers, management and also the society as a whole. Inclusive policies are developed and implemented without any hesitation. Problems are solved collaboratively by giving equal opportunities to all members for voicing their opinions. Teachers are supported by colleagues and superiors while catering to the needs of diverse students. Communities are involved where the school takes help from different community members as resource persons, etc. to give a wholesome learning environment to all students. Schools following an inclusive culture exhibits specific surroundings. This culture does not only exist in the classrooms, but everywhere in the school campus. The inclusive culture takes a long time to develop. It requires total coordination and cooperation of schools, human resources and the community. There are various strategies to develop inclusive cultures in schools. Let's have a look at some of them with the help of building blocks. The first strategy is to translate national inclusive education policies into school-based policies. Efforts are taken in developing school policies for inclusive classroom environments involving schools, teachers, municipal officers, school administrators, parents and children as well as other stakeholders. These school-based policies should include commitment to non-discrimination and inclusion. All the interactions and the functioning of the school should take place without any discrimination. The principle of inclusion is to be followed right from the process of admission to the last day of school for all students. Focus on the development of a child-centered school framework. A school having an inclusive culture is very flexible. It modifies the teaching, learning and evaluation framework to cater to the needs of the differently abled students. Engage in school self-assessments and school development plans. The school should also constantly assess the different practices followed by it and make modifications as and when necessary. My earlier video on assessment in inclusive education discusses how inclusive schools assess themselves regarding inclusive practices. Do watch it. The link has been put in the description box and will be shown on the end screen. These assessments help the planning and incorporating of new methodologies and techniques to deal with diverse learners in the future. The second strategy is to ensure that inclusive policies are reflected in all aspects of life. So the schools should follow inclusive classroom teaching relationships and between the teachers and the students. So the teachers should follow teaching techniques that includes all kinds of learners, strategies that encourage group work and student interaction 
should be conducted in school for example using cooperative learning or buddy system teaching strategies teaching aids are to be provided to the differently able students in the same classroom so that there is no segregation at the policy making stage too inclusive practices should be followed the school board meetings need to have members who are aware of the needs of the differently able students along with those of the regular students the school's policies and decisions should be taken considering all types of students a school following inclusive culture does not solely depend on one time summative evaluation instead opportunities are given to differently able students to demonstrate their learning through a continuous comprehensive and flexible assessment the continuous assessments provide feedback for teachers who can at any moment adjust their lessons to ensure that all children understand what is going on it helps to communicate the strengths and weaknesses of their wards with their parents on a regular basis so that they can be involved in the learning process of their children throughout the school year it is assessment for and of learning the school should follow inclusive trips and playground behavior all types of students those with and without challenges should be allowed to participate in school trips if required parents and additional personnel like special teachers nurses along with the support staff accompany the students during such trips opportunities to all students must be given to participate in different sports competitions students should not be restricted in participating in co-curricular and extracurricular activities due to their disabilities or challenges while deciding the budgetary allocations finances should be given to cater to the needs of the differently abled for example the school may require talking calculators for their visually challenged students infrastructural facilities like ramps or lifts along with their maintenance should be provided in the budget the third strategy is to increase understanding and knowledge of disability and challenges teacher associations parent teacher associations school boards and other functioning school support groups conduct programs to increase awareness and knowledge about diverse learners these programs could be in the form of lecture workshop or even street plays to educate the society regarding inclusion these awareness programs can help in developing a positive attitude towards the differently able students of the entire community the fourth strategy deals with involving parents in monitoring the differently able students in order that the systems are transparent and accountable to them and the children the parents or of the regular children are also involved to help parents of the differently able student for example parents volunteer to form carpools helping students with physical challenges in transportation thus parents are very actively involved in schools having an inclusive culture these are some of the strategies to develop inclusive culture in schools diversity is welcomed in a school having an inclusive culture human resources and physical resources are made available for the differently able students within the classroom all learning experiences are kept flexible to cater to the needs of a variety of students teachers and school personnel are encouraged to be creative and innovative in schools and classroom interactions the most important factor 
Is that the leadership, that is the management, the principal or the head of the school should strongly believe in the policy of inclusion and is committed to follow it in the entire functioning of the school. Developing inclusive school culture is not only the responsibility of the school personnel but also the various members in the society. Thus, it is a collaborative effort. Please check out this site for further reading. It is a very comprehensive booklet addressing various aspects of inclusive education. The link has been given in the description box also. Plus, please visit my channel and watch my other videos where different inclusive teaching strategies, assessment, infrastructural facilities and other topics related to inclusive education have been discussed. The links have been given in the description box and on the end screen. If you have liked the video, do give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.